Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video we are going to be talking about temperate carnivorous plants. It is now the middle of October and it's time we start thinking about putting these guys to bed for the year. Uh, certain plants are going to go dormant before other plants. This is a Saracenia flava in front of me. Uh, it's one of the first to start growing and it's one of the first to actually finish as well. A few other ones are going to be Saracenia orophila and um, other similar ones like that that start growing early need to um, kind of get trimmed up and put to bed early as well. Other ones like Leucophila are actually still there out front and they're looking really good this time of year so I'm going to be leaving them. So what I normally do is I trim off all the dead pitchers. This guy I'm going to do today. The ones like Leucophila probably do in a month's time and I trim them right off if they don't have any of the non-carnivorous leaves so it makes them very easy to store for the winter time. And as the days get shorter and we get to about Halloween, when there's only about 10 hours of light left, these guys go pretty much completely dormant. So what we're going to do today, we'll trim this guy up, make him look pretty together. Then I'm going to take you on a tour of a few of the carnivorous plants. Maybe check out the Venus flytraps, talk about those guys, what we need to do for winter care for Venus flytraps as well. It's always another one of those subjects that um, people are quite unsure of. But these are temperate, they do need a winter rest, you can't grow them in the house. They need to go to sleep for the winter time or else they just get weaker and weaker and die. So as I say, let's put this guy to bed. Alright, there's a good shot of it in front of us. Now I just finished another video. We um, looked into the inside of a cobra lily. If you want to um, see that video, if you're interested in that, please um, feel free to check it out. It will be loaded up either right before or right after this. What we're going to do in this case though, since I'm just preparing them for winter, is we're going to quickly cut off all the big pitchers. I know it's sad to do, but um, honestly they don't look that good this time of year anyways. If any are looking okay, like that one looks okay, I'll leave him for a little bit. He's not flopped over or anything. We're just going to do a trim. Now, once I have a little bit more time, when I'm not talking to you guys, I will go in and I'll trim them quite close to the base. But for today, I'm just going to hunt down all the broken pitchers, just like so, and trim them off. You can see from the summertime, I've had to stake a few of them. So I think the stakes are pretty safe to come out now. These plants are going to be getting shorter and shorter. I'll pull that guy out, remove him. And you can see um, quite clearly, the, in this guy's case, the non-carnivorous leaves here. So a few plants get these. Flava is definitely one that um, produces these leaves. It's kind of nice because at least it gives it a little bit of show for the, the winter time. Let's see here. This was just sort of a plant ring that I made up to keep the pictures upright. I'll take that off. This guy wants to flop down. So I'm going to cut him there. This guy wants to flop down. So I'll go in and cut him quite close to the base. By doing this now, it's going to also save you time in the spring. And as these guys are coming out of dormancy, by having less pitchers there, you're going to have actually a better chance of getting earlier growth because the more light is going to penetrate down deeper. So I think for now, and these are the flower pods here. I, I didn't pollinate these guys this year. I did leave them on. I don't know if they um, if any kind of insect pollinated them, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer, see if they crack open on their own and any seeds come out. If they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. And this guy, as I say, he still looks okay. So we're left with two pitchers, two flowers, and a bunch of non-carnivorous leaves for the winter time. You can see down low here, I planted a few um, Cytocena seedlings. They're just going to stay in there. And then this is going to go into an area that is um, very sheltered. I want to be able to control the water in it. I'll leave it up for the rains of the, the fall, but come winter time when it's freezing and snowing, I'll probably put them under the eaves. I might um, put a layer of mulch over them or here under cover here. I'll just give you a little pan up. So we have a sheltered area here and it um, doesn't see any rain. It doesn't see any snow under here and it stays a few degrees warmer than, than outside. So these guys are good down until if we're talking Celsius, they're good down until minus 6, minus 7, minus 8 anyways, um, quite easily. One of the biggest problems with them is if you live in an area that freezes and thaws, freezes and thaws, then you're going to want to try to keep them from freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing. Once they're frozen, try to keep them frozen. 
or try not to let them freeze in the first place. Just keep them sheltered. Insulate the pots. But anyways, why don't we take a look around and we'll head out front um, and we'll check out the Venus flytraps next. All right, so these are a couple of the bog containers that I made in the spring. They turned out really nice. The leucophila in the first one here has got nice um, sort of a white edge to the plant and kind of makes the, the pot a little bit lighter in color. And then over there on the second one is predominantly Judith Hindle, which is a very red plant this time of year. Both these plants look great this time of year and produce some of their nicest pictures of the year. That is just a gorgeous picture right there. So let's go in a little bit closer and we'll check them out. All right, so you're down a little closer. Hopefully you can see this montage of everything here. We have some nice temperate sundews down here by my scissors. They've all put up their seed pods for the, the year. I'll leave these guys until it gets a little wetter out. I want to leave them on the plant as long as I can before collecting the seeds from them. The original summer pitchers from the Leucophila, they're starting to wear as well. And those will be some of the first ones that will go later on in the fall. But um, look at the other ones that it's, they're still producing. Like that's brand new, beautiful, not a bug in it. These guys just keep going right into the fall. Now, swinging back down, you can see here, again, there's some non-carnivorous leaves tucked in there. Right here. I don't know if you can see that. I apologize, my tripod is broken. It's kind of um, hard to use right now. But there's non-carnivorous leaves in there. That is from uh, Oreophila. It is gone for the year. So you can probably safely remove some of these pictures and get rid of those. You can see a few dead pictures. These are mainly from the Oreophila. Okay. Now the reason we're out here though is the Venus flytraps. Now mine are still looking great this time of year but they will be going dormant soon. As the, um, the light gets down to about 10 hours of light a day, these guys will shut down. All their traps are gonna turn black, kind of like this one has. Now these guys, I find they have a, a trap that deteriorates easy enough that I don't worry about removing them ahead of time or that. Come spring, they're easy just to, just to pluck off and remove. But they look absolutely fantastic this time of year. Lots of light, bright weather still, not any frost. Now, Venus flytraps are a plant that needs dormancy. These are a temperate carnivorous plant. You cannot grow them in the house for many successful years. They're going to get weaker and weaker and slowly fade away if you do not give them that winter rest that they need. It's like trying to grow a daffodil or a crocus on your windowsill all year long. It's just going to get weaker and weaker till it finally just dies. So dormancy is very important for these guys. But yeah, they look absolutely great this time of year, at least here. If we swing you over a little bit more, now you're looking at uh, Saracenia purpurea. Beautiful coloring this time of year. You can see the veiny lips on them. They have an open trap, a pitfall trap that um, rainwater fills these guys. Rainwater does not fill the other Saracenias. They're generally dry inside where these ones are generally wet. Now these traps, usually last two or three years so I try not to cut them off every year like I do the other Saracenias. So where the Leucophilas here that are um, just behind the camera are going to get a complete haircut in a month and be there will be no pictures left. Those ones are not going to get that haircut. They're going to keep their pictures and remain all winter. I'm just sort of working off camera here working on this Oreophila getting rid of some of the, um, the dead pictures. But anyways, these guys, they are going to be tucked into the undercover area just like the rest of the um, carnivorous plants that I um, just showed you. They're going to be fairly sheltered. They're in bigger pots this year, which I think is going to do them very well. They usually survive in four to six inch pots outside. This year they will be in these big bog pots. So they're gonna be much, much more stable. So I'm looking forward to a little bit easier transition. And a plane is flying overhead. Hopefully that doesn't come up on camera too loud. Look at the beauty of this one. This one's more of a red planter. The Judith Hindles look great this time of year as well. They're still producing new ones. You can see just off camera here. New, um, new traps are being formed. 
and they're going to keep going like this for another month or so here in my area. Anyways, what's left? I think the only thing left to touch base on are, well, we're here. Let's um, talk a little bit more about the sundews. So these are temperate sundews. They need to be frozen outside as well. They are going to go dormant. They go into a little hibernacular bud. It looks like just a little pea sitting on the top of the soil. They go absolutely tiny in the winter time. And again, they need their dormancy in order to come back in the spring. And then they come back, usually bigger than um, the previous year anyways. So they look really good this time of year as well. Now let's head back and we will do one more um, carnivorous plant, which is the cobra lilies. All right, back full circle in front of the cobra lilies. They did really good this year. They got some massive pictures on them. I just removed one of the pictures, showed you guys what's inside, just on a different video. This thing has a flower this time of year, which is the wrong time of year for flowers. I noticed that a couple of them are all coming up in flower. Cobra lilies are one of the more delicate ones. They don't like much heat in the summertime. And they can't stand a lot of cold in the wintertime. Now talking Celsius again, I start to worry when these guys see minus five, minus six. If it was to get down much below that, I would probably bring them in and shelter them in an unheated garage or something like that. There's not a lot to do for these guys. Normally the pictures last two or three years. I do seem to have an abundance of pictures that are starting to brown. So you can um, go in there. And I like to do it sort of in a two-part thing. Remove the big head of the picture. It kind of lets you see what's going on in there. And then you can remove um, the rest of it as well. But just simply remove them. There's some young ones coming up through the um, dead ones there. The roots themselves start to grow new pictures. But anyways, they're a little bit harder to um, do, especially on camera, especially with one hand, because they're just so tight in there. But I think what I'll do this year is I'm going to clear out all these dead ones from years back and just remove anything that looks like that. And just start to clean them up nicely. The, the growth side has seemed to change. It was growing out over on that side, and now it's, all the new growth is over there, so it tells you it's slowly been crawling across that way. Same with this one here. Lots of new growth on this side over here. That sort of fall growth, you can see it's lighter green and still thinks that um, summer's coming back, so it's not quite dormant yet either. The flower spike is growing a couple inches every week. But anyways, so that is care guide for October. It's time to close down your temperate carnivorous plants. Make sure they're safe, tucked away for the winter time. Some areas um, are already experiencing frost. Others are snow. We probably have a month or two before we have any snow. We usually don't get snow before Christmas here. But anyways, better to be prepared, better to be ready. And just remember to keep them sheltered and not too frozen. Anyways guys, happy growing.